Good morning, Jürgen. Um, good place Hi. to start. Lots of games, obviously. So I just wonder if you could give us an update on the squad, uh, whether you've got any fresh problems and also in particular on Jordan Henderson, I suppose, and whether he is fit to return. No new cases. Um, and handle and drill trained yesterday. So with the team fully. So we have, to, like always with these things, and you have to wait how to react it overnight. Uh, and what they can do today, but they trained yesterday. The big news, I suppose, across the Premier League this week is uh, Thomas Tuchel replacing Frank Lampard, um, a man you've got plenty of shared history with um, at some of the clubs in Germany. I just wonder what you, you know, what you can tell us about him and what qualities he'll bring to the Premier League. Yeah, obviously, two two things would happen. One is that um, Frank Lampard lost his job, and I have to say, I uh, well. <laughs> That's a really tough one, to be honest. Um, I think that Chelsea did an incredible job in the transfer market this summer, brought in really good players, and things like this need time. It's completely normal, and um, I think it's a, it's it's a really harsh to make the decision that early. But obviously, um, Mr. Abramovich uh, gives you some. Um, chances, money, players, whatever, but he's not the most patient person in the world, obviously. Um, so that's the one thing. And I really feel for Frank because he's a young, really, really talented manager and I wish him only the best. So he will be fine, I'm sure. But it's a, it's a hard one if your club, if it happens in your club and it was obviously Frank's club. But maybe it's good now. The story is over. Now he can be can go everywhere and be completely fresh and without any history. But for... Um, Thomas Tuchel obviously is a great, <laughs> unfortunately a really good, good, good um, manager. So and um, yeah, I'll know him long and um, respect him a lot. And um, no, but he for this, uh, this Chelsea squad is a present. Eh? So and um, I'm pretty sure Thomas sees it like that. And um, so yeah, they will, they will be good. And just finally, um, this week football's lawmakers, I suppose is a good way to put it. They looked at the, the offside rule and the interpretation of it after the goal at Manchester City scored. Yes, Villa will be really happy about it, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? I mean, changing the law mid-season, I just wonder, or the interpretation certainly of the rule, what, what are your thoughts on, on that? Well, my first, my first thought, how can it be that, that you don't think about this kind of rule before? Right? There, there, we had situations years ago. It was funny enough against Tottenham when Dan Lovren had a situation where he hit the ball and then Harry Kane could score. So this situation is not the first time that it happened. But everybody explained, no, it's like this. It was, an, uh, um, what is it? An intentional, is it the right word? Like touch, he went to the ball and that's why he touched it. But he only went to the ball because Harry Kane was there and he didn't kind of make the decision if he's offside or not. So maybe you find in your, so it's the years ago that we had that problem. So finally, I would say, finally, we changed that because it makes no sense. And um, it was just with all the, I mean, all football people and both sides, the one who scores the goals and the side who, who concedes the goals are, agree that it's like, huh? How can we sort that? It makes it really difficult. Um, then something is wrong, and I'm really happy that they finally changed it. Thank you, Ben. Simon. Hi, Jurgen. Um, I was looking back at your, obviously, this was your very first match as Liverpool manager. Uh, what probably, I don't know whether it seems <laughs> yeah. like a long time ago or, or not now. That, that goal was draw at White Hart. How many there. games did I have in between then and oh, now? Oh, loads, loads. <laughs> I would like to hear the, the exact number if you are well, really prepared not, for the interview. Was it not your four hundredth recently? So what four hundred and one? So this this is possibly four hundred. It might feel for, for you like this, but it, I don't think I have I reached four hundred already. So loads is fine, Simon. That's loads, thanks. I should have left it at loads. Okay, yeah. But uh, yeah. looking at the starting lineups, it was interesting because of your starting lineup and subs. There are only two players that are still with you today. Whereas the Spurs one, they've actually got nine players still with them. So what does that maybe say about the progression and the changes that you've made, maybe as well as Spurs as well, but I think specifically you guys? Nah, it's, completely different. it's a completely different situation. When I arrived in England, um, Spurs was the most talented, for sure most talented squad, that incredible, um, incredibly talented players and very young 
um, Harry, I forget now, 100% a couple of, but um, of course, um, Loris was maybe not that, not a kid anymore, but uh, in a best age for a goalie. Um, Harry Kane, Ericsson, Deli Ali, um, Eric Dyer, Lamela, um, Davis, Alderweireld. So they, they were they were all really young that time and and already really good. So there's no and, and work to, well, the upcoming or just a, a matter of time when they will be really successful. And by the way, they were really successful that year. I think they became second in that year, if I'm 100 right. Don't know it exactly anymore. So different situation. And when I arrived, they had a different squad, so um, a different age group. We had to change things, and um, so that's different. So it says nothing. It says just a, it's just more about how the situation was that time and not um, they were in the best age and we weren't. Um, they were in a really good place and we weren't. So um, you have to make then more changes if you are not happy with the situation. And that's what we tried to do. And I know that the result in the FA Cup game against Manchester United certainly wasn't what you wanted. But in reflection now and maybe in what you've seen this week on the training ground from the lads as well, has it felt like it's a turning point and you've seen the good points that you know are there at Liverpool. So when I understand the question, it's always like this, everybody's waiting at us, you know, yeah, that was the turning point. And I want to, I want it to be the turning point, but the turning point, the result would have been nice as well. So you, you play well and then you get a result. So there were a lot of good stuff in, um, but of course we conceded three goals. So that's not what we want, but I cannot always, uh, now this was the turning point and that was the turning point. And this was the turning point. It's not about that. It's a general, the general situation is, is, um, is, a challenge and a challenge is good. So, and I'm, 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 I'm fine with it. It's um, I'm not the person who sits here and thinks my life should always be perfect. And my team has to win all the football games. If something is going wrong, you have to work on it. That's what we are doing. Um, but, and we are in this, in, in this, in this moment. And now the next game is, is Tottenham. If I say now, yes, it was the changing point, uh, a turning point, sorry. And then against Tottenham, we don't play like that. Then it's oh, we have to start again. We can't constantly start new. We started already while ago and, and change things and, and, and try to improve and all this kind of stuff. And we will stay on that. We will, we will stay on track. We will do that and do that and do it. We will be really annoying and we will fight hard and um, we will be positive with the positive things and we will be critical with the not so positive things. That's what we do. And I know people expect me to be in a bad mood or whatever. I'm not. I take the situation like it is and go out and make sure that we are ready for a fight and we will be ready for a fight tomorrow night where but it will lead us to i don't know so um tottenham when we met last time i think in december or so it was first and second something like that <laughs> obviously um that's not the same situation anymore a lot of things happen since then that's how football is in a month's time a lot of things can happen again and we want to make sure that this then if we talk then about the last month it's much more positive than this last month but we cannot change the last month anymore we have to take it and i know it's easier in in the high flying times to believe in what you do but i'm not a only a good weather coach I was never uh, so it's just for all for all circumstances you have you need to have the right answers and the right answer for this is respond to some things and keep the things which are really good and there are still a lot of things and united is not like we out of the blue we played some good stuff again we played good stuff before but we have to do it consistently we have to do it more often we have to do it for 95 minutes in the game all these kind of things we know it and we will do it Thank you, Simon. Good to see you. Okay, we'll go to Great. <laughs> we'll go to Ian from Talksport, and then we'll go to Nate and to the impact from the Press Association. But uh, Ian, next. Hi, Jürgen. How are you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My first question is: um, You're at a club whereby managers are always given so much time. Frank Lampard was at a club at Chelsea whereby managers, if it's not working after a year or eighteen months. Bye, see you later. Why do you think there are such different clubs? And what advice would you give to Thomas Tuchel as a German coach coming here? We've seen you for successful. We've seen uh, Daniel Farker was successful. Um, you know. I, I will for sure give Thomas Tuchel no public advice. I'm not sure when we play them next. I don't have his actual number, so I couldn't text him. Um, but he was a while in France and never got a French number. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, no advice necessary for my side. The difference is the club. I always said it. I was lucky with the clubs. I was absolutely lucky with the clubs. At Mainz, everybody wanted me to succeed. 
is succeed the right word to do well. Um, at Dortmund, exactly the same, and at Liverpool, the same. So, um, why did I get the time? Because my because the owners um, or the presidents, sporting directors from the former clubs um, thought we are doing the right stuff and 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 knew that it takes time. So it's all about it's it's. How, how many coaches did um, Chelsea have in the last 10 years? I don't know, or 15 years. It's quite yeah. a lot. So yeah, quite a lot. You, are, you are successful or out. <laughs> well, that's obviously the, the mantra. And, and I cannot um, have nothing to do with that. Um, um, yeah, how I said, I said it plenty of times. I was lucky with the clubs I, I had always. And um, we're only three, but I was lucky. And for Frank, everything will be fine. I think the football people out there, um, if they saw the some of the stuff Chelsea played last year already, um, they have to say, okay, there's a clear plan. It's a real. And Frank might not want to hear that, but he was not too long in the business, so he's not a talent, but he's a young a young manager, and he did a lot of really good stuff. And um, he will be back soon um, if he wants that, and then he can see if he'll get more time, 100. percent the big plus point from last Sunday has to be Mo Salah scoring again. Um, you mentioned time there. How much time, how much more time do your front three need to score goals in the Premier League? Because it's, it's been it's been a ridiculously long period of time for that for three talented players not to score goals. Yeah, but football is like this. So you have to come in the right situations. You have to 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 make the right decisions. All these kind of things. And I don't know how long it takes or whatever. It's about it's about in this world, we are losing trust and faith much too quick. Everywhere, everything is great, or everything is the opposite. So, and there are so many stages in between, and um, so we have a commitment to each other. So that's how it is. That doesn't mean they can play how they want and stuff like that. They never did. They never could. So that if it, I see them trying, I see them working on it and all that stuff, and. Um, we, we are working as a team on, on, on solutions, not tell them, so everything is fine, but we don't finish the situation. So it's not like this. Um, if we finish the situation, then we concede goals, stuff like we have, we have. It's a complex game, and I love that about the football game. It's never about one person. That was, why, that was the main reason why I love this game so much as a kid already, that I don't, didn't have to be perfect, and we still can win games. So it's about that. We have to become, and we, do, we talk about these things because it's obvious, scoring like, like three, what is it? Yeah, scoring like crazy or not scoring. That's a big thing in between, I know. Um, but it's really about um, it just became, being the team we want to be. And the, the team we want to be is actually the one team nobody wants to play against. And that's a little bit of a problem. I think in the moment it's like defend deep against us, and at one point you will you will, you will get a, counter, a chance to counter attack. But we want to be the team nobody wants to play against, and we have the chance to, to be that team tomorrow night, and then on Sunday, and then on Wednesday, if I'm right. So and then again and again. So that's the team, and that's what we always wanted to be. But then all of a sudden, people told us we are the best team in the world, which we never were. But that's not a problem. Um, we could beat the best team in the world. We can still be the best team in the world. That's good. But we have to prove that. On the pitch again, and we will. We are on fire if you want um, to strike back. Um, and the more negative things are thought about us or said about us, yeah, the more we maybe the more we want it. Even I don't read it and don't hear it, but I know it anyway. So that's that's the the situation we are in. And for our supporters, the problem is you would say now if you play a home game or whatever, the supporters have to be on their toes and come on, like that's great a, a proper atmosphere. That will not be there anyway. I taught them not because we play away and the West Ham as well. So it, that, that these, but I really hope, and that's a chance for us as well, that we can do together with our fans now in the moment, even when we are not together, just create that 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 common fighting spirit again. So it's it's difficult. We didn't see each other for a while, and now we became champion. Now the, 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 the results at least, and some performances dropped a little bit. It was always clear that it could happen. Now we can show how strong we are, and I'm I'm. On it, in it, whatever you want, um, and whoever wants to follow, welcome. Okay, uh, Nate, one for you, and then Ian Parker to finish, and we'll go to the uh, breakout section. So, Nate, first of all, hi, Jurgen. I think you've just touched on it in the previous answer, but this is a really tough run of fixtures for Liverpool 
Now, not only Tottenham tomorrow night, but City and Leicester next month. So, how, how do you want... West Ham is flying. West Ham is flying. Don't, for, don't forget them. Eh? West Ham as well. Six, but they're, they're, all in, arms, yeah. they're all in the top four and, and Tottenham can obviously knock you out, out there with a win tomorrow night. So, how, how do you want them to... How do you want your team to respond to this run of tough fixtures? First and foremost, and you might remember it, we never thought about the game after the next game. So, we played... Tottenham. We played Tottenham. Nothing else. We only have to play Tottenham. We don't have to play the other four, whoever it is in this game as well. It's only Tottenham. It's tough enough, but it's only Tottenham. And that's what we what we have to make clear. So, again, in the best times, we had to say and said it because it was the truth. We went in it game by game. In this moment, we go in it game by game. Tottenham. Do you think it's impossible for us to get there something? No, probably not. I don't know. Probably not. Is it difficult? Yes. That's with all the family games the same. And we just have to make it happen. That's that's how it is. And it's difficult, I know, but we will try. You will see. Thank you very much, Nate. And then finish Ian Parker's, I think, I think you're from PA, Ian, I'm guessing. Um, anyway. Yeah, um, just a quick one, it kind of follows on from that. Um, we often hear that defending the title is more difficult than winning it. You've been going through some sort of challenges, I guess, in the last few weeks. Have you seen anything different in the mental approach of your players this season to, to maybe last season? Now, of course, because we are we are different. We are we, we, a year further, the year before. It's always like this. We all, the, the time change and, and everything changes. Of course, things are different. New players in, things are different. So, because the results aren't good, may, people might say, now it's worse. But that's not true. I think it's um, changes. Um, you cannot judge them only because of the result, the short-term result. So we make all our decisions in a, for a long term. So that, like, that, we, that really that the club has a benefit in the long term. And that's what we did this time as, as well. So, and we will give our absolute everything this season. It's not about defending the title or whatever. It's about winning football games. It was always about this defending or attacking football, um, 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 uh, the title. It's more something you, you say for, you have to say because you ask me. So these kind of things. Um, we have to, we have to, this club and this team has the potential to fight for the title. We will see if we can make that happen, if we can get closer there again this year. If not, we will try next year. So these kind of things, we give our absolute everything this season and especially um, for the next game. And with all the difficulties we had, we try really all we can. And that's it. And we get judged for that. That's how it is. That's fine as well. And it's, I can I understand 100%. If you don't win the game, people think you don't try hard enough. But I can tell you, we try hard and we will continue trying. Okay. Embargo section now, guys. Okay. So for those of you, 